Seven to four. Seven to four. Notre Dame come back and beat you. You think it was up three to three to one or one to one. Notre Dame come back and beat you. Notre Dame they got. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see all of you and welcome you. We're going to sing some we haven't sung in a while, and maybe you've never not sung before. I always like to add the sneaky ones in here. Still doing that again. And I just realized I didn't get my bill. All righty, hymn number 59, hymn number 59 is what we're going to start with tonight. My Lord is near me all the time. Across the sky is my deep power I see, and I know if he can rain on high, his light will shine on me. I've seen it in the lightning, heard it in the thunder, and felt it in the My Lord is near me all the time. My Lord is near me all the time. When the thunder shakes the mighty hills and trembles every tree, then I know a God so great and strong and surely harm me. I've seen it in the lightning, heard it in the thunder, and felt it in the rain. My Lord is near me all the time. My Lord is near me all the time. When refreshing showers cool the earth and sweep across the sea. Then his rainbow shines within my heart. His nearness comforts me. We've seen it in the lightning, heard it in the thunder, and felt it in the My Lord is near me all the time. My Lord is near me all the time. I like that one. It reminds me of a time I was a summer missionary. The night before I flew back home after being in Utah uh, for a summer, I was sitting uh, on my the porch of my supervisor, Brother Mayo Brown, getting ready to come back home the next day. And uh, I'm looking out and across the plain, there's a thunderstorm going across the, the Rocky Mountains. And I was in Salt Lake City, and there's a thunderstorm going across the, the Rocky Mountains there. And, and I was always terrified of thunderstorms. I mean, terrified. 
And I'm sitting there, and I'm seeing all these lightning strikes. I mean, it's just a boom, 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 just constant as I watch that across the, the way. And I go, you know, all that power that's being exhibited and released by in that one thunderstorm and all those lightning bolts doesn't even begin to dent the power of God. And he's taking care of me. I still don't like thunderstorms, but I'm not terrified of them. You know, uh, I know the power and I respect them and so forth. But that just, and, and this hymn reminds me of that time. I've seen it in the lightning. I've heard it in the thunder and felt it in the rain. My Lord is near me all the time. I think that'll preach. That 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 <laughs> that that that'll preach. That that's for sure. All right. Uh, well, let's uh, let's take a moment and have a word of prayer. Father God, we do thank you and and uh, indeed for the message of your your comfort and your presence. You're you're with us at every moment. Even when we're discouraged, even when things aren't hitting on eight cylinders, uh, even when things are terrifying to us, you're right there. You never leave us. Sometimes we feel like you do, but that's us and not you. And Father, we thank you that we can turn to you. And for the worship we've already had and in the choir and the worship we're, we've had here already and in the worship of the day, uh, I, I can't thank you enough. Yeah, you. You've taught us so much. And there's so many concerns that we have and we could spend all night talking about those concerns. And We want to pray for all of them and, and lift them up to you. You know who's on our hearts and you know who's on our list. And so, God, we just ask you to minister in each situation as your will would have us. Father, we ask amiss all the time because we want everything to be perfect. Sometimes things aren't perfect. Sometimes things will never be perfect. But you're there. So touch and heal, comfort strengthen, and Father, help us to glorify your name in everything we do. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now this one, I don't know that we've ever sung here since I've been here, but let's, uh, let's learn a new one if we haven't sung it here. Hymn number 151. The way of the cross leads home. There's no other way but this. I shall ne'er get sight of the gates of light if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know. Onward go the way of the cross leads home. I must needs go on a broad, sweet, cold way, the path that the Savior trod. Trod, sorry. If I ever climb to the gates of life, where the soul of the with God, the 
way the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as onward go the way the cross leads home. Then I bid farewell to the way of the world to walk in it nevermore. For the world has come and I say, I home where he waits at the open door. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. And I never know that the word go the way of the cross leads home. Need to clean my eyes. And I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and one we know very well, hymn number 547. I stand amazed in the presence. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful. And my song shall ever be. <clears throat> I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, when my soul shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden, he prayed not my will but mine. He had no tears, his own grief, but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful is my soul shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my soul he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and soft and bled alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my soul shall ever be. How marvelous, how is my Savior's love for me. When with a ransomed in glory his face I at last shall see, twill be my thing through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my soul shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Well, you do one more. I guess my throat will hold up. What you need Well, my eyeballs blocked out a word. <laughs> I, I would do 133. 133. He wants to do 133. Pastor's prerogative. Pastor's prerogative. <clears throat>
shed for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day. Had that on my mind this evening. I, uh, churches I grew up in, that was a major, that was a major, major song, especially on first Sunday. Major song that we sang. I'll tell you, it, it just makes me think about those times where the church would just kind of get torn to pieces and you know, on no song. When you're really singing that song and you're really thinking about it, that, that, that can get to you. Amen. I was thinking about it actually regarding this this sermon even. And thinking about old old John and what he went through and having to come back and realize that what Jesus has never fades. It never loses its power. Amen. A lot of things we we have, they lose their power. They lose their strength and we have to recharge things and all that, but you don't ever have to recharge Jesus. Amen. Always has the power. And the thing about the power of Jesus Christ and the power of God is that we can have it. We just don't use it. Amen. We store it away like we can, like we're going to store up. We store it up enough. We can really do what we want to do. You can really do what you want when you're emptied out. That's when you can really do what you ought to do is when you get emptied out. Amen. And get filled up with the Lord. Amen. Blood will never lose its power. Never lose its power. Amen. 
Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come and we thank you for allowing us to be here. Father, thank you for the choir and others that are here this evening. Father, they could be somewhere else right now, Father, but they're here. Thank you for those who may be watching and or listening. And just continue to be with us. Lead us in this service just for a few more minutes. Father, thank you for the wonderful day. Father, I know that the heat is coming on, Father, but even you made the heat. So, oh, Father, we know that you handle all things. You hand span the universe. We know you can handle whatever troubles us. As always, forgive us where we fail thee. Be with us, lead us, and guide us. And send the mighty and blessed name of Jesus. For a sake that we do pray. As always, let the words of my mouth, meditation in my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. This this morning, uh, coming from old Matthew 11 and 1 through 11, and we're going back there. There's another little piece that I don't want to leave out. I don't want to leave out Matthew 11 verses 1 through 11. Matthew 11 verses 1 through 11. This, this, quite frankly, this is when John the Baptist asked about Jesus. Amen. So it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and he said unto him, Art thou he that should come or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. Amen. But what went ye out for to see a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, There hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Amen. And turn to your neighbor and say, we're going to talk about the prison of his persuasions. Amen. I should say the prison of our persuasion. (laughs) The prison of his persuasions. Amen. Amen. And again, really, John was cast into prison because of his preaching. But he, when he spoke up about some of the wicked things that were going on in marriages and intermarrying and all these different things, he really got in trouble because he was doing it publicly. And so that's the short version. You can go and read the long version of Herod and Herodias and all that stuff. And, and there's just a lot going on. Wasn't right, just like it wouldn't be right today. And, and he paid the ultimate price. And going, you can read it all the way up to his beheading and all those things. But we're going to stick this evening uh, just again to his being in, in in prison. And then sometimes when we have our fears and our doubts and we're, and we're seeking, sometimes we're not seeking Jesus enough. Sometimes we're not even remembering where he brought us, where we came from. You know, sometimes all we have to do is sit back and think about how far you came. How far God brought you. That would do enough for a lot of people. Just sit back and think about where you came from. Now, if you grew up and you never did anything wrong in your life, this may not hit you that way. But but speaking from my point of view, standing in my own shoes, Brother Bill, and I have to preach this one to me, I'm telling you, Lord, have mercy. (laughs) There ain't never a better phrase for me than Lord, have mercy. And he did. And so all I have to do is think about way back from where he brought me from, from good upbringing, good parents, good, good Christian grandparents, people who did stuff, who told you stuff. And I was like any, almost any other person I met. I had to find out for myself, Lisa. <laughs> I had to go out and find out for myself. And boy, 
The lessons you learn when you go and find out for yourself, boy, can be awful. And God's still there. He's still there. When people walk away, when people won't answer their phone, when people won't, won't loan you a little money to get you to the next day, when people won't do this, when they don't, they talk about you, they lock the door and all that stuff, God's still right there. You know, when you, you do good, God's there. When you do bad, he's suffering with you. I know what you, I, I know I'm looking at you. I know. I know. But you got to look at me. I'm looking at you and you ain't looking at me. You, you got to look at me so we can straighten this stuff out. Amen. We look everywhere else. But I feel, you know, you feel sorry for old John the Baptist here when you're reading about him. Because as Jesus said, among them that are born of women, there had not risen a greater than him. Amen. At this point, they had not. And so here he is in prison. Speaking the truth. We all get in our little prison speaking the truth. Amen. We have people condemn us. We have family condemn us. We have, we have people who don't even know us condemn us. I say all the time, there's so many things in this world. If people just knew what they were saying, if they had information on what they were talking about versus what they heard or somebody told them, we'd be in a lot better space. A lot better space. But sometimes we can't go against the tide. Against the crowd. And we say things sometimes like, am I really saved? Am I really secure? I've had young people say that before. Am I really? I I want to do all these other things. And I said, stop right there because you know you're saved. Satan don't stop because you're saved. They didn't give a stop sign. (laughs) He don't stop. Actually, he gets the green light when you're saved. Amen. He ain't going to quit because you're saved. You got to work at that salvation. Amen. He ain't going to quit. You still going to make mistakes. Things are going to go wrong. People are going to die. Things are going to happen. Amen. That's the world we live in while you're saved. Am I really secure? What if I made a mistake? What if Jesus isn't really the way to heaven? I've had people say that who want to put forth other religious ideas and things. I said, don't you remember where it says, every knee shall bow. <laughs> every knee shall bow. That puts That's the end of that for me. That tells me all I need to know. There is nothing else but Jesus Christ. I don't care what else you look at or study at or, or prophesy about or do an archaeological study and find these temples and all that stuff. Jesus is it and all and end all. Amen. If you believe what we believe. Amen. If you believe what we believe, you can ask the Muslims, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Mormons, or whoever. There are some people questioning by different religions. Well, am I right or am I wrong? Some of these things are generational. Generational. Some of our beliefs, which can be mighty wrong, are generational. Amen? That's some of the stuff we don't want to face. At some point, somebody's got to say, no, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. And God will help you with that. What if God really can't take care and meet my needs? And now, that's one I can't even imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine somebody saying, but yet people say that. I had a gentleman who I really respected and a, and a professor, and, and we did things together out on campus, and I'll never forget talking about the Lord one day, and, and he just stopped and held the ball and had his racket, put it down, and, he said, uh, you believe that hogwash? Now, I got to tell you, the first thing was my temperature went up. My blood pressure went up. Because not only was I, I was offended, and not only was I offended, but I thought, again, generational, I thought, my grandfather taught me this. My grandmother taught me this. All the people I knew in my neighborhood taught me this. I know about this God and this Jesus Christ and about salvation. And you're calling it hogwash. Not only are you offending me, you offending them. And, and the rest of them thoughts, I can't tell you. <laughs> but that's how committed I was to what I knew and to what I know. And sometimes we aren't today or we won't say. I did very kindly and very nicely and sweet as I could be at the moment tell him what I thought about hogwash. <laughs> 
And I said, that hogwash you got won't get you where I'm going. Amen. But again, John had his doubts in this prison. He said, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? In the prison, John had come to doubt the very person of Jesus. Shouldn't have, but he had come to. Amen. What John discovered in the prison. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he's locked up and he can no longer see what he had seen and, and that he heard and that he saw. He can no longer hear the Lord's voice and, and as he preaches and teaches and he's removed from the sights and sounds of the ministry of Jesus and his heart became clouded with doubts and questions. And that can happen to us if you're removed. Now he was removed. He was put in prison. He was removed. Most of us remove ourselves. People who fall back into sin, we remove ourselves from Jesus Christ. He never removes himself from us. We remove ourselves from him. And then we create our own prisons, our own persuasions of things. And so he found himself locked in the prison, as I said this morning, and he had discouragement, and he had disappointment, and he had disillusionment. And he found himself locked in this prison of doubt because he had listened to his own doubts and fears. When we listen to what we think and what we feel and what we see or to what our hearts tell us, it can get us in trouble. Amen. You just got to turn to the Lord. I don't care what else you think or whatever. When we listen to ourselves, when we get it in our heads to listen to ourselves, that's where the trouble starts. That's where the trouble starts. When we get it in our head, we watch something on TV and we go, yeah, I think... When people tell me a lot of times that, that I think, I think the Bible says this, I, th I said, no, you got to know what the Bible says. You can't say I think because when you say I think the Bible says this, what I learned is you're putting what you think in between them words. You're adding to and you're taking away. The Bible says do not do that. It says what it says. Amen. And you think, well, if it can happen to John the Baptist a little bit, it can surely happen to somebody like me. It, those things can happen. We fail to see the big picture sometimes. John did not understand that Jesus had, had to die and rise again in the big picture. He didn't. And, of course, when you're in trouble, when things are bad, when things are happening, you can only see that little picture, right? That little thing that you're in, that's all you can see at the time, right? That's all you get. That's all you see. It's your problem. Can't nobody else help you? And then eventually you get around to, but God can. Which again, I tell people all the time, we should get there first. We almost always get there last. I have my problem. I go here, I do this. If I need money, I run to the bank. I don't get on my knees first. Pray to the one who has a cattle of a thousand hills. I, I run to the bank first. And if the bank, for whatever reason, says no, then I get on my knees. <laughs> It's so often that we do those things. Amen. That's what we do. We go try to figure it out for ourselves. We go to thinking. We go to thinking. I, maybe I can do this. And I can talk to that person. I can do this thing. I can do that thing. Fred, and I can do that. And then I go. On, and once you get closer to the inevitable, it ain't going to happen. Then we, here we go. Knee down, head bowed. God help me in this. And he's just been sitting there waiting on you. <laughs> Waiting on you. Why don't you call me first? Why don't you talk to me first when the situation's going on? Instead of going everywhere else and all about town, making a fool out of yourself sometimes. But God does not praise, as I said this morning. He does not, he does not sugarcoat the lives of his saints. He never has. You got to go through something, whether you think you do or not. You don't become 10 feet tall and bulletproof. That's God. <laughs> That's not us. Like I tell, I tell people all the time, and it sounds weird. I know to some of Satan ain't afraid of me. He ain't. He's afraid of the God I serve. He respects the God I serve. He knows the God I serve. Actually better than I do. <laughs> when you think about it, he knows him better than I do. And if I'm serving him, he knows he's in the background somewhere. But he never stops being in the background. 
was part of our problem also. And so we have, again, as I said, that was a quick rundown of this one, of the deceptions of this prison experience. And then we have the demonstrations of this prison experience, how Jesus answered John in 4 through 6. So Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do see and hear, or hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Amen. Amen. That's what he, that's what he said. And Jesus hears the disciples of John and their question. He does not send back a stinging word of rebuke. Jesus could have said, what does John think he is? Who does he think he is to question me? He saw the spirit descending on me. He knows that I am the savior. He knows and he has preached it. He has no right or room to doubt me. Go back and tell John to get his heart right with God. He could have said that. But he didn't. <laughs> Amen. It's not what Jesus does when he hears the doubts and that have gripped John's heart. Jesus responds with patience, grace, and love. Look at his response. Go and show John again. Amen. That's what he does with us again <laughs> and again <laughs> and again with patience and grace and love. Amen. Jesus is willing to help John as he works through his problem. Many would have reacted in anger. Jesus reacted in love. I'm going to tell you all just, just a minute. One of the things I really loved about my grandfather is I, I never really saw him react in anger. He could have, and he could have tore up a whole lot of places, Gary. He's a big man, big strong man, strapping man. He didn't react in anger unless he just really got to the end of the line. But most of the time when he talked to us when we do things wrong, he talked to us so so soft and low, and I knew he carried a big stick, so I didn't. I, that wasn't my, <laughs> I was just praying he'd never use it. And I and I and I gotta be honest. I think he might have hit me one time with an open palm on the leg, and I think it was numb for about three hours. But <laughs> but 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 that was it. I mean, he would always. And Tammy, of course, got to know him well. He was crazy about her because we were dating then, even in, in high school. And he was and he was crazy about her. But I don't know. I don't remember him ever. Only time he'd ever get loud is he might get loud praising God in church. That's about it. Big man had a soft voice. He laughed real easy, he laughed loud. You'd know it was him if he laughed and stuff, but never. And that was one of the things I loved. He talked to you. He didn't talk at you. He didn't say, because I said so. He'd explain stuff. Because I knew, I grew to learn that saying I said so, sometimes that's really not a great answer. That's just saying I got power over you. Explain it. Don't just say, because I, I said so. That just means you got the power and I don't. <laughs> Explain things, and he would do that. And that made me think of that today, just looking at this. You know, I wish we never doubted. Sometimes, truth is, we do. Have you ever found yourself in a place of discouragement and depression like Elijah? You ever come to the place where you're depressed and defeated, discouraged, and disillusioned? We all have at some point. Somewhere we all have. But notice how tenderly and with what grace the Lord ministered to Elijah. It's 1 Kings 19, 1 through 16. So if you want to go there, you can go there. But here it said, the Lord did not, in verse, verses 5 through 8, the Lord did not rebuke Elijah. He ministered to him. In 9 and 13, God did not write him off. He reaffirmed his call. Amen. Verses 5, 7, 9, 12. God did not yell at him. He spoke tenderly to him. Amen. God did not give his ministry to another. He gave him a fresh assignment. Amen. 
God did not allow his doubts to continue. He set the record straight with a pointed word of encouragement. In 1918. Well, you say, what's the point? It will demonstrate that same tenderness to us when we find ourselves locked in a prison of perplexity. He will give us the same conversation. Amen. He will come to to us and minister to us. He will dispense grace in sufficient measure for our need. He will stand by us and enable us to go on for his glory. He will speak peace to our troubled hearts. He will deal with our doubts in his time, in his way. Thank God that we serve a patient God of love, mercy, and grace. So Jesus answered John, and then he assured John. Jesus really pointed John back to the word of God. Jesus reported all the things he was doing and seemed to be saying, just go back and tell John to read his Bible, and he'll understand. That's what he seems to be saying. That's what he'd be saying. Just go back and read your Bible. Go back and read. Some of the verses and things he would say. Tell John that I am the Messiah. I'm doing everything the prophet said I would do. I'm fulfilling the word of my father. In part now, I will fulfill the rest when the appointed time comes. Just tell John to look at it. And he'll see me. Just really look and he'll see me. Amen. So the Bible is the absolute cure for our doubts. If we can but read the word and take on faith that God will do everything he's promised. And that he will stand by his word no matter what. We can see our doubts fall before our eyes. If you believe what you say you believe, your doubts will fall. Amen. Now, they may not fall yesterday because you want them yet. We want everything yesterday. They may not fall yesterday, but they'll fall if you keep believing. Amen. If you hold on. Reverend Durson, you say, if you hold on and tighten up the rope, you'll see it. Amen. And you'll know it. The last thing is how Jesus admonished John. Same admonition Jesus gave to Thomas when he questioned the resurrection. The Lord wants John to know that he does not have to have all the answers. See, we want all the answers. And we're taught that from kindergarten. We got to have the answer. You don't have the answer, you're wrong. But Jesus, you don't have to have all the answers. You can't have all the answers because if you did, you wouldn't turn to him. You don't need all the answers. I don't care how, many, how long you go to school. You can get 15 degrees in theology and religion and all that stuff. You can't have all the answers. Matter of fact, the best part sometimes, for me at least, and the word and studying and that kind of thing is that the mystery sometimes is still there. Because if we knew everything we wanted to know, we wouldn't turn to him. We turn everywhere else. And we tell people we know we would become the God. Amen. See, Jesus wants John to believe in spite of the mysteries of life. Like he wants us to believe in spite of the mysteries of life. Wants John's faith to be in Jesus in spite of what the eyes see, the heart feels, or the mind thinks. He wants us to believe in him and to simply trust him by faith. Just to believe in him and trust him by faith and let the mysteries be the mystery. It's amazing in most other, everything that we know, the way we hunger for things and our curiosity and all that, when there's a mystery, we always keep hungering for that thing. And it's funny, we don't often give up on stuff because there's a mystery. It often grabs us. Well, I want to know. You see these shows now? I watch some of them about archaeological digs and all this stuff and the mysteries of the abandoned and all this stuff. And you spend hours watching. I have watched this one show for weeks and they hadn't got to the 
the answer of anything, and yet they have millions of people watching. It's like, are they going to find that? That are they gonna find that tomb this week? <laughs> are they gonna keep digging. They dig over here. They dig. Up. The mysteries of things get us. We get enraptured by. It. There's so many shows right now. The ones where they they digging on some island for gold or something. That thing's been on about three years. Millions of viewers. It ain't taken off. They ain't found a thimble of gold yet. <laughs> but the, what they catch you with is they they keep getting that thing. They find little little uh, nuts at boats and stuff. <laughs> And like they got tractors out there bigger than this church out there digging down looking for they ain't found gold in four years. But they keep but the mystery of it. It's the mystery of the thing. But yet we can't accept the mystery of the word sometimes. I know some of y'all watch those shows. I've seen a couple of heads nodding. I watch Mystery of the Abandoned. I watch all I'm interested in one, I'm interested in the history of things, and then I'm interested in the science of things. But the mystery part's like I'm going to quit watching that show, Brother Bill, because they ain't found nothing. They ain't found no more than I have, and I'm sitting at home watching on TV. <laughs> but that's what gets us. Yet when it comes to the Bible, we sometimes just quit altogether. Well, it ain't happened, so I'm going to quit right now because God just he didn't show up Tuesday, and I thought he was going <laughs> to. It's like he never left. <laughs> what do you mean? He never left. Why are you waiting on him to show up? Why don't you show up for a change? Why don't you do what you need to do for a change? Why don't you send up some knee mail for a change? Talk to him, amen? We wait, and sometimes in the wrong way. This is what Jesus wants from us all. See, the world, this world is filled with many mysteries. Why do good people suffer? Why do babies get sick sometimes and suffer and die? Why do good people seem to have more than their share of problems and trials? Why does it seem like serving God doesn't always pay off in this world? Why is this world filled with sickness, suffering, sorrow, and death? We will never have the answers to all those things. We can't. If we allow our hearts and minds to dwell on them, we can find our faith shipwrecked on the jagged rocks of doubt. We must come to the place where we simply cast our doubts aside and trust God for the things we cannot see, feel, or understand. we got to give it to God. Amen? We must come to the place of obedient faith in him, his power, and his purposes for our lives. There are two important truths this evening I wanted to just mention. Our God is a God of power. Tells us in several places in scripture. And our God is a God of purpose. He's a God of purpose. We can trust him. And that is the truth. He wants us to understand. When we enter the prison. Of our persuasions. We can trust him. We can trust him. There's a lot of mistrust in this world. Right now over some of the silliest stuff you're you ever want to see we got to trust in the Lord we got to trust in the Lord a God who he hand spans the universe how can I not trust him to handle these things that are going on in our lives and part of the problem is we keep trusting in each other for some of these things that are bigger than all of us yeah, there's some things you could trust me with. There's some things you could trust Brother Fred. There's some things you could trust Miss Tootsie with. There, there are things that you certainly, we have the ability to be trusted with and can handle some things. But this stuff we have going on in this world, I, I heard somebody say the other day, <laughs> we can't handle that. It's too big for us. And the only, Luckily, we got a big God. Who can handle it all. Some of these things going on, they're too big for us. They're too big for us to have a lot of comment about. They're too big for us to do anything about. Some of them are repetitive in our histories and all these things because man keeps doing it. God doesn't do some of these things that we want to blame him for. He's the solution, not the problem. And we know who the adversary is. We know, we know Satan is not a mystery. That's something we know. And we know who God is. 
We know who he is. A God of power. Isaiah 40 and 12, Exodus 3 and 14, Luke 1 and 37, Job 42 and 2. All, all those talk about God being a God of power. Romans 8 and 28, Isaiah 46 and, and 10, Ephesians 1 and 11 talk about God being a God of purpose. We know what we need to know despite the mystery. Amen. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I have no idea what tomorrow holds. But I do know who holds it. <laughs> I do know who holds tomorrow for us. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come and we thank you for those who've come out this evening. Continue to be with us, Lord. Help us in our doubts and our fears. Oh, Father, let us just go to bed tonight, turn off the lights and just sleep like a baby, just giving it all to you, knowing that you'll watch over us. Oh, Father, we just thank you for just being to be here, to be able to talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to know through examples, through your word, Father, that you handle it all. When we fall, when we fade, when we fear, Father, you're still there, and we thank you for that. Oh, Father, there's somebody who may be watching or listening tonight who doesn't know you, whose doubts and fears have plummeted them. Father, lift them up right now. Send them into that secret closet where they may pray, Father. And they may wait on you. Again, touch Robert Reed this evening. Oh, Father, touch Mandy Young and her family this evening in loss of her father. And touch those that we're duty-bound to pray for. That list is long, Father, and we can't remember them all. But, Father, you can fix them all if you choose to. Continue to be with us, lead and guide us. And we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory you so richly deserve. And in the mighty and blessed name of your darling son, Jesus, and for his sake that we do pray. Amen. We'll see you on Wednesday. Amen.